And this is one of the hardest things that we see for companies around the world where they are unsure of where they are because they haven't done the work, they haven't done the audit to look at the numbers and the statistics to see where their company is today and then by division and by role, how many people are male versus female. And you need to understand, just like with any type of a map, where you are today to understand where it is that you need to go. And so we strongly recommend that even if the results are not good, you need to see what is behind the numbers, because then you can ask the difficult questions and start to solve for it. So if you see that the biggest challenge is in one certain division, you can work there. Or if it's one transition from one role to the next, you can work there on solving for that problem. Now, uh, for many companies globally, they use a platform called Genderfair, where this is a company that helps organizations understand how they fare as it relates to gender equality. And so they have an assessment that companies can take. Uh, they try to make it very easy to give you a sense of where you're at. But what we would strongly recommend is you want to use an assessment like this internally to look at the core four areas that you need to recognize what that audit is for you today. Those four gender equality measures recommended by Gender Fair are leadership, employee policies, advertising, and purpose. So let's start off by looking at these four different areas that you can measure across all. So first, as it relates to leadership, you wanna look at what kinds of leadership programs do you have in place for women in your organization? How many women executives or C-suite members do you have today? So women in the roles of chief executive officer, chief financial officer, uh, chief marketing officer. Most companies will have a woman who's in an executive role as it relates to human resources or human relations. And it's important to expand beyond that. You also wanna look at the gender composition of your board. Now, for Fortune 500 companies in the United States, that benchmark is 20%. So one out of five board members are women today. And then also, of course, looking at management across the board. When it relates to employee policies, you want to look at things for Japanese companies like, is there paid maternity leave? So those mothers being allowed to take off time with their children so that they can give them that foundation they need and then come back to work at the right time. But do you also have paid paternity leave? So can fathers take off time when their babies are born to help get the family home and that child on the right track? And do you encourage male leaders and men at every level to take that time to be with their family? That is one of the biggest shifts in the United States that is helping from a gender equality perspective. So we strongly recommend that you do that. Of course, the best companies in Japan, like Shiseido, are those companies that have on-site childcare, making it very easy for women to be able to come back to work. They also look for lactation rooms in case those mothers are nursing mothers for their young child. You'd want to have that gender pay gap study that becomes a part of your employee policies where you will share out the results. Be honest, transparent about where you are today and where you'll go. And then you also want to provide support as it relates to sexual harassment for your employees. Now, another thing that we see companies doing that are leading the way when it comes to advertising is they are doing a few things related to advertising and marketing. So they want to make sure that the brand is positively breaking gender stereotypes. You want to make sure that you're not objectifying women or using them as a sexual object in any way. 
And of course, you want to make sure that you are not depicting gender-based violence. And then finally, as it relates to purpose, some of the numbers that you could be looking at are, are you investing from a social responsibility perspective in community-based programs that focus on women, girls, and gender equality? And will you actually publish the financial contributions that you are making to those programs.